Musicians. Kind of casting a wide net with this week's theme, but just hear me out. We grew up with them awkwardly performing at school talent shows and just abusing the shit out of a trumpet. We suffered through local shows that we were forced to attend because our friend is a drummer in one of the bands and they were the second band to play and there's four more bands, but you can't leave because you'll look like a dick. And we've all been there when some asshole at a house party picks up an acoustic guitar, which subsequently led to the idea of you turning on the gas stove and just leaving without saying anything. Amateur musicians are a strange subset of people. They live in a different reality from us normal where everything is just surrounding music. For us regular people, music is something to be enjoyed or admired. But to musicians, it's something like a mathematical equation that they spend most of their lives trying to figure out. Also, it's something to get them laid. Mostly number two, I would say. So let me spend the next few minutes discussing all the problems I have with musicians and amateur musicians and try and ignore the whiny tone I have while I destroy the thing you've dedicated your life to. Stream out in flames. So let's start off with the obvious issue, which is the types of people that become musicians. I mean, it's not a problem if you play an instrument or if you're in a band. I play the piano secretly and poorly, but if you leave me alone in a room with a baby grand, I can twinkle the ivories. But for some reason, learning an instrument can turn an annoying person into an obnoxious person overnight. Not everyone who plays guitar is a douche, just every douche has at one point tried to play guitar, if that makes any sense. So let me break down the types of low-level musicians that you're gonna have to navigate through for the rest of your life. Up first, we have indie band Dave. Now, the word insufferable gets thrown around a lot these days, but for uh, Dave, it's an apt description. Both he and his bandmates know the bare basics when Both he and his bandmates know the bare basics when it comes to their respective instruments, but that works out because genres like Midwest emo welcome such a lazy sound to their ever-expanding catalog. And the lyrics of the songs that he writes, oh my god, oh my god, if I have to hear one more lyric about a goddamn cigarette. She broke my heart when I was eating Wendy's chili in a parking lot smoking a cigarette. That's like 90%, 90% of those songs. And also, this is the outfit, this is the uniform. I don't know why it makes me so angry, but it makes me so goddamn angry. And does all of this kind of describe Alvin Flames a little bit? Yes, go stream Alvin Flames, but he doesn't sing about cigarettes, I don't think. I don't think I've heard cigarette in a song, so it's fine. Number two, we have the white guy in your hometown that thinks he can rap. Poor, poor soul. I don't know if this is a universal thing, but they're, they're a dime a dozen in central Massachusetts. Anytime you're at a house party, you can find this fella taking over the ox and rapping over lo-fi hip-hop beats. Their Instagram story is constantly promoting big things coming, as if their three-song LP is gonna be anything worth listening to. All of his songs have like 30 streams on Spotify, and it's only from him and his homies that don't understand why their boy's not blowing up yet. This is also a little off-topic, but I think it's super funny that these dudes act crazy hard, and their name is Austin, or something like that. Like, dude, your mom just made chicken parm. Go home. Go home for dinner. Number three, we have people who can sing really well, but they won't just come out and say that. And these people are the fucking bane of my existence. We all know someone who did like theater when they were a kid, or they took singing lessons, and they, they make it your problem, because now they work at Chase Bank, and they don't have any creative outlets, so they're gonna sing happy birthday a little too well, and they're gonna hope you comment on it. Or you're all just singing along to like Taylor Swift in the car, and all of a sudden she's like, and now we got bad blood, but imagine that was good. And like, she takes it way too far, and then you have to be like, oh my God, did you take singing lessons? She's like, oh my God, how'd you know? Shut up. Shut up. It wouldn't be so bad if they owned up to it. If they just started belting out really well, it'd be kind of funny and kind of impressive. But no, they do it super subtly. They do it super low key, almost like whisper singing the notes. So you have to be like, oh my God, are you a good singer? I never do it. I, I let them sing their little hearts out to themselves and I will never ever ever bring up the fact that they're a good singer. Cause it's manipulative. Makes me so mad. And number four, we have the musical savant, or protege. I don't know the difference between those words. It's that one guy or girl who was like in your marching band and they were way too good on their instrument. Like they, what are you doing here? You should be famous. And everyone when they were kids said they were gonna go far and their parents were definitely a little overbearing, but like they, they really understood their instrument to a crazy degree. But now that they're an adult and they're classically trained on the trombone, I mean, it's, it's impressive, but what are you gonna do? Become a music teacher, you know? It's just kind of sad. I mean, Jesus Christ, there's like five jobs in the world where playing the piano pays you more than 25K a year. So it's a damn shame that you broke your fingers playing for your parents to try and impress them for something that's just not gonna be financially viable and never work out. Speaking of which, have you broken your fingers due to the negligence of an overbearing middle school piano teacher? Or maybe you were hit over the head with a PBR bottle at one of your friend's terrible open house shows. Do you want to hire a lawyer, but you thought, geez, oh, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, let me tell you, Morgan & Morgan makes it easy. 
That's right, I'm sponsored by Morgan & Morgan, the law firm. With Morgan & Morgan's modernized process, you can submit a claim and have it reviewed by a lawyer all without never leaving your couch. I didn't say that right, all with never leaving your couch. Anyway, you can sign documents, upload pictures, share medical records, and doctor's bills all from your phone. You can even text message your attorney and case manager without ever going into an office. How fun, this is the future. If you're ever injured in an accident, hiring an attorney is one of the first things you should do. I've made this mistake multiple times. And with Morgan & Morgan, you can submit a claim in less than eight clicks, which is mathematically less than 10 clicks, which is a small amount of clicks to begin with. We all know people who say size doesn't matter are liars. And it's same thing goes with law firms, because Morgan & Morgan's really big. With Morgan & Morgan, you can have America's largest injury law firm fighting for you. You can get started at ForThePeople.com or Pound Law. That's pound 529 from yourself. Now that we've talked about musicians that suck eggs, let's talk about the things they say that give me mental hemorrhoids. There's nothing on earth worse than a music snob. I mean, there is. Hi, my goodness, you're so cuddly. But if I hear one more person say that their favorite band was ruined because they got discovered on TikTok, I'm gonna strip naked and sit down and it's a small world and have a mental breakdown. Wasn't that crazy that that happened? That was nuts. But anyway, here are the worst music takes I've ever heard from the most obnoxious music snob. Number one, we have the fact that the Beatles are overrated. Shut up. Oh my God, shut the hell up. Listen, I would not call myself a Beatles fan. I don't sit down and listen to the Beatles ever. If I'm cleaning up my apartment, I'm not listening to Love Me Do, I'm listening to the, uh, the M83 outro or Album Flames, go stream Album Flames. But the Beatles, by definition, are not overrated. They are they are rated to a T. They only sound boring to you because they were the first ones to do shit that everyone's doing nowadays. They were pioneers. I'm not well versed in how to make music, but they were the first ones or the pioneers of all this shit. They invented or pioneered all this. And I know some of these things, and I know that Macadelic would be worthless without them. It's like saying Toy Story is unwatchable because the CGI is so bad. Yeah, but it was the first one. It's very fucking important. You should respect it. Number two, uh, it's the statement that music is getting worse. Really? Really, dude? You, you head in the sand, moron? Is music actually getting worse? Are you an old person afraid of change and innovation, and you're just gonna listen to Diver Down for the fucking millionth time? Nothing's wrong with the classics. You just have to have a little bit of self-awareness that you, this, the new music's maybe not for you. It's not getting worse. Every generation thinks the new generation's music is ass. You never hear a kid say music to Today sucks because they are in the music today. And on that topic, when people say there's a lack of good music nowadays, oh my god, are you are you insane? I'm not gonna sit here and list all my favorite artists because that's not what I'm trying to achieve with this video, go stream out in flame. I will say though, we are in the golden age of discovering artists that fill every single niche possible. Just because you don't like what they're playing on your local radio station does not mean the music world is going through some kind of apocalypse, you're just an idiot. Just look a little bit harder, just tilt your head a little bit to the left and find out there's a dude in Amsterdam with 30 listens a month that is making music specifically for you. You're just being lazy and bitching about stuff that isn't even true, which makes you the worst type of person. Who put that red arrow there? That's fucked up. And then finally we have the fact that people say Nickelback is the worst band ever. It's not the worst band ever. Nickelback is fine. They are okay. Their music is obviously soulless, just being made for radio plays, and there's not a lot of meaning behind it, but it's okay. That's fine. That's a fine for people to do. Talk all the shit you want about Nickelback, but when those opening chords of How You Remind Me come on the radio, tell me you're not singing along to that shit. And the same goes for Coldplay. Or Imagine Dragons. Fucking Imagine Dragons, they're out. They're pretty good. They're, I mean, a lot of people like them. Imagine Dragons Night Vision in 2012 changed my freshman year of high school. That was a fucking fantastic album. And yes, their sound is generic, but I don't give a fuck. They, it's good. Hating popular things because they're popular doesn't make you look cool. It just makes you look like you hate things that are popular to look cool. I'm sure there's a better way to say that, but you know, you're an asshole. So as much as I've been shitting on amateur musicians, they're very important to the ecosystem of music. Like, I, they're, they're good for the economy. It's important to point out that they're not all bad. The majority of them aren't bad, it's just the bad ones are really bad and I hate them. Most of them are decent, talented people that are struggling to find any ground in this hellscape of a TikTok-dominated popularity contest. So I took the time to find some smaller artists that don't get the attention that they deserve and bring them to the forefront. And last time I did this, you guys commented on the person's thing and said, you just got tugged. I would ask you not to do that. It's very creepy. But I'm gonna bring them to the forefront so you guys can appreciate the smaller artists that I actually enjoy. Okay, up first we have Alvin Flames. I had to do it. All right, moving on. Okay, up first we have Eric Nakasa. Nakasa, I don't know how to, whatever. I can't find a pronunciation for it. I know nothing of this person. I do not know where they're from. I do not know how old they are. I just know they make music that touches my soul deeply. They bounce between lo-fi and clean instrumentals that just wrench my heart talking about the anxiety and the pain of just living an everyday normal life. And I, they, they seem to be like 19. They seem to be young. Currently they have a little over 8K monthly listeners and they deserve way more than that. I mean, I'll play a snippet. Go back, it's getting worse. Oh my god, Jesus Christ. Then we have Laura Zaka. Once again, I don't know how to pronounce these people's names, but they're great. Great voice, plays guitar. She she does covers on her YouTube, but she also plays her own little instrumentals on shorts. Oh my god, it's so good. She's been doing it for 13 years and does not get the attention she did. Listen to this little part right here. Listen to the song. You kind of fall apart, but 
Things never fall. Oh my god. Then we have a guy that I've been listening to for a while actually, and it's broken at best. I found this guy on TikTok two years ago, and he has just been ruining my life ever since, in a good way. He's a singer-songwriter that makes like Midwest emo folk pop. I don't whatever the fuck he's doing, it's fantastic. He's got a song called New Phone Who Dis. Just listen to this snippet. Every friend I make has got an expiration date will either die or drift away, and I'm not sure. Which one hurts more until they're dead? Do you not want to drive your car off a bridge? Do you not want to change your life in a meaningful way? Then we have Matt Farley, AKA the guy who sings about cities and towns. Can you guess what his music's about? This one's pretty self-explanatory, but it is extremely impressive what he's been able to achieve. He's a Massachusetts native who, uh, if you live in a city or town, he's probably made a song about it. Look at how many songs this guy's fucking made. He's got like a mile long discography and it's just a project to, to, to make a little song about every city or town in America. I think he does Europe, Europe too. I don't know fucking clue what he's up to, but he's, he's sung songs about my town. And yes, the songs could be a little bit more put together and thoughtful. They're, they're kind of, you know, you can tell he's pumping them out, but it's still, this is an impressive thing, I would say. It's, it's a weird thing that someone said down and decided to do, but I'm happy he did it. And finally, we have this guy called Ed Sheeran. If you haven't heard of this dude, he's a singer-songwriter that writes these really sad love songs, and it makes sense, because I mean, look at him, who could love this face? He's flown under the radar for a very long time. On Spotify, he only has 78.4 million, million li monthly listeners. Oh, fuck, is he famous? Oh, he made a song with Justin Bieber, but he looks, how can someone be famous if they look like that? Good for him, I guess. Okay. New videos every Saturday, stream album flames.